No. no. <laughs> it's bad. It's real it's bad. bad. It's gloomy. <laughs> Doom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> Deep, dark depression. <laughs> Excessive misery. You're not too worried about it. I can just no. tell. You're not too worried. John's staying busy. Yes, thankfully. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. How, how do you feel like the uh, women are doing? You, you're over the ladies' ministry. How do you feel like the women are doing in the church or basically just in our community dealing with this? Do women deal with it different than men? Yes. How? Because we're so emotionally invested and we are such fixers and we are continually trying to fix everything. So when something's con totally out of your control, you're like kind of left with, okay, what do we do now? So, uh, and men are just like, hey, fix it. Mm -hmm. Boy, and so they just go on with their merry little lot. row. <laughs> Women are nurturers. And we, you know, we're constantly trying to, we want to make it better for our family. We want to make it better for everyone around us. And when something's totally taken out of your hands, mm -hmm. and then the complexity of that is though, your world has gotten so small and men can, you know, they can take and they can just go into their little zone mm -hmm. and watch Westerns or whatever they do. Mm -hmm. And they're fine with the world. And if a woman's setting it, she is not, not processing. There is something going on continually with us. Mm -hmm. There's not a time we're not engaged. Our mind mm -hmm. Even if we're s silent, we're engaged mm -hmm. in something. So the, you, you think the nesting instinct causes you to worry more than men do? I don't know if it's even worry. It's just like we are so used to being the answer for our family. And, in it, and we're still having to do that uh, in, in this type of situation. But the problem is so much of it is being thrust upon us and we're not being able to make the decisions that we normally make concerning where did the kids go? What do they do? So much has been put upon us and so many restrictions till it's a different thought process. So I think we're having to refocus our processing, mm -hmm. the way we think, the way we approach things, which uh, as women, we are always processing. We're mm -hmm. always looking, we're yeah. always engaging and we're very emotionally invested in every single thing. And whereas, I mean, you know, men have the luxury in most cases of saying, I take care of mine, I take care of me. And if I'm good, everybody's good. But women are like, mm -hmm. if everyone's not good, I'm not good. Mm -hmm. you gotta fix we it. take on the world. We're fixers. Fixers, it's, yep. nurturers. It's great being a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think? I said the same thing a while ago, just nurtures. We tend to want to fix and nurture. That's just in our genes. That's part of our DNA. And, and so how are you responding with this, um, this, this virus, this crisis situation? I mean, like Cheryl said, it's like we're always thinking. We're always, okay, what's the next step? Um, I, I get up in the morning and uh, start with my coffee. <laughs> Got to start there. And, and, of course, I start with the Lord at the center of my life and just say, God, give me direction. I need a spirit of discernment. Um, I just need your guidance. I need your peace. And I just start saying the things that um, is my relationship with the Lord on an everyday basis and just start really, you know, just depending on him like I always have. I mean, nothing's been different in that case. I feel like that because of my relationship with the Lord all along, it's prepared me. You, you think you handle things different than Teddy? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> He's the caveman. He goes right to his cave. Absolutely. And we're fixers. <laughs> we start figuring it out all day long. We have to, we just and, you know, have, we have a mindset of figuring it out. God, so that's not the part that we struggle with. Uh, it's, it's the confidence the world. in the guy, huh? You know, it, well, it's the confidence, uh, I think, in uh, what's being thrust upon our families on how it impacts our families that we continually have to reevaluate. And we're continually trying to see, okay, with everything, God's our, our rock. He's our foundation. So everything we do is based out of that. So we're cool there, but it's everything being thrust upon from the media, being thrust upon mm -hmm. us from uh, regulations, restrictions. Everybody's got all these news conferences and, and they affect your everyday life. Mm -hmm. And, and you're not a, 
this, if someone's saying it's not really affecting me, they're in denial mm -hmm. because everything affects us. But, you, but you're thinking but though it, it affects you Jesus more Christ. than it does John. Oh, yes. It, it, okay. Now, let me ask you the, back to one question. I'll get to you in one second here. The youth, you, you and Teddy have worked with the youth for 100 years. Um, Somewhere around what, there. Um, what, do you, what do you feel like this thing is, how is this affecting them? Um, I feel like it's definitely a, a change that they've never, ever um, yeah, they've never had to come up against like before. before. Um, Most of I, them don't even know of 9-11. Yeah, I feel like that. It, I mean, obviously, even my mother-in-law, who is 84, said that she's never seen anything like this. So, I mean, it, it's definitely a challenge that everybody is facing. But the youth, I feel like right now, um, is they're wa they're watching to see how we're handling things as well. Are, we are have they to be the example. Depression? They some of them are, but some of that's why we're trying to do our best to send out positive, um, yeah. just different devotions, anything that can uplift them. But yes, they are. So be sensitive to the youth. Be, um, they need us. Yeah. Especially the seniors right now, um, because well, and Teddy, you know, they're facing a situation right now that they're not getting to have that last semester of accomplishment that everyone looks for. Yes. You know, they're not being able to have those last of anything. They've right. lost all of that. So it's right. actually, they have lost a part of everything that they have looked forward to because they've, they've endured all the years to get to this almost last semester And now they've been sent to mind. the room, basically. And yeah, basically you know what I thought was out. kind of yeah. amazing about that is really our seniors actually were born doing, during 9-11. Uh, and yes. now their senior year, they're going out in a, in a pandem pandemic, pandemic, sorry. <laughs> and so here it's like, I really pandemic. wonder what God has for these, these seniors uh, because of when they were born, you know, time means everything. And, well, you got two classes of seniors here. You're talking about senior in high school, and then yeah. you're talking about senior, mm -hmm. senior well, adults probably. that are over. Uh, and the older I get, uh, the younger that is. You yeah. know that, of mm -hmm. course. So, uh, but you're, this, you're, you're talking about senior adults. No, I'm talking about the seniors in high school. Oh, seniors in high school. Okay. Right. Because a... and and everything. <clears throat> I mean, you look back, uh, even when, even though it's been eons ago for me when you was a teenager, but. Uh, you know, everything was important because your world was very small mm -hmm. when you was a teenager. And uh, even when your relationship with Christ, your, your world was very self-centered. It was, you was finding those things that validated you. And one of the things that validates you when you're a, a teenager is that accomplishment, having that accomplishment of my senior year. Yeah. It's yes. A big thing. It's so a many big things. validation. Okay. And when you lose that, right. she's talking about how we need to be very sensitive and, you know, be supportive of them is because they they're losing a big part of the validation that kind of yeah. validates what they've done and gives them the confidence to move to the next yeah. level. And when they're losing that validation point at this point in their life, they're kind of left just without a compass right. in Almost a way because hopeless. they're finishing and then they're wanting to step out in that next what they've looked forward to. I, I get to finish this and their big thing is and I get to leave home and I get to be mm -hmm. on my own but there's never that place of validation so I think we have to be very very sensitive to our youth right now and what she's saying right. the times they didn't experience it but they were born here they go and they're losing that validation and those final things that they've got to do. And so we really, really do need to uphold Absolutely. them during this time. And, and I feel like there's a sense of hopelessness almost. That's yeah. the, the word that comes to me when I think of the youth. Yeah. They feel like this is hopeless. Like we need to let them know as much as we can to encourage them that we're going to get through this together. Look for opportunities to get through it. Um, I know Ethan was telling me, you know, how they weren't going to be going back to school. And, of course, he cried. You know, I don't know how Caden was handling yeah. things. But <clears throat> Caden's been pretty, pretty sad about things. But you've got, you've got kids at all ages mm -hmm. in your family. How, how as a mom are you dealing with that? I'm trying to keep everything as normal, as normal as possible. 
And so that's one of the key things is keep living life. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to do. And so I'm trying to keep everything as normal as normal. And, and we're kind of treating it a little bit like a vacation. We're doing extra things as a family. It's actually been great bonding time for us. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> we've had a good time. You know, we're playing board games and things like that. But something else that we're doing is we are breaking open the word every single day. We're almost done with Matthew and we're going into Mark next. Wow. We're doing a chapter a day. And we are, I'm literally breaking it down verse by verse. And my kids, I have seen such growth in them yeah. spiritually um, since this has been going on because I've never had this kind of opportunity before. Yeah. And so that's been pretty amazing to see even the little kids like Timothy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just wild to see their excitement about the Bible. So it's, yeah. that's something that we've done to yeah. encourage ourselves. You know, that's what the Bible that's says, right. encourage yourself. And this is a time and our relationship with God more than ever before that we've got to encourage ourselves daily. So, Absolutely. and not just us as adults, but our children, we have to teach them there you go. the way they need to go. Absolutely. And so they're going to learn through this, that we're going to make it through anything. And I think that's been a key thing for me, Pastor Jerry, is I was thinking about the Lord and all the times that he's been so faithful. So when this hit, this isn't a time of me feeling like, oh, he's not going to be faithful. Mm -hmm. He's always been faithful. He's yes. gotten me through so many things. So I'm so thankful for the relationship that I have with him over the years because it mm -hmm. prepared me for this time, yes. this season. As, yes. as a mom, are you, um, I, I mean, obviously you're concerned, uh, but are, are, you, are you feeling a sense of extra concern about this? Is that... Uh, I, I guess that would really bring me to one of the first questions that I wanted to ask you is during this time, what is it that you are using as a, whether it be scriptures, whether it be songs, whether it be whatever, what are you actually doing to kind of keep yourself centered? Well, the first thing is we are really digging into the word without mm -hmm. a shadow of a doubt. That has been the key you know, and also our prayer time with the Lord. And then I'm using other things. Um, there's some movies that we've been watching, you know, basically we're stretching our faith. Um, and so, uh, the movie chosen has come out and it has been, I saw just a little bit of that. Did, okay. Have y'all seen of all three? Of I saw a movie? little bit of it. It is phenomenal. I encourage mm -hmm. everyone to watch this. Okay. It goes through the story and the life of Jesus and the characters, you get to see the disciples and their personalities. Yeah. And it is probably one of the best ones that I've seen out there because I've watched different ones. And mm -hmm. my kids are so eager because it's series. They have series. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, we got, we're stretching it. We're, stre <laughs> we're stretching it out because we don't want it to end. Mm -hmm. But it has been so yeah. neat to even see Jesus and, and how they portray his, his personality. His character mm -hmm. is, is awesome. He's so amazing. Yes. But to see his personality here on earth. You know, yeah. that's how they portray him uh, in that. But also the disciples. I mean, John yeah. the Baptist was pretty radical. Now, I didn't see yeah. John the Baptist. I saw <laughs> Jesus. One of the fun things to me was his reaction. Like, for instance, whenever they pulled the fish up out of the, out of the water onto the boat. Oh, yeah. His reaction. I mean, he was having as much fun with it as they were having. <laughs> but, yeah, that was great. So, so just kind of centered. How about you? Uh, what, what's, um, what's kind of keeping you, your family, centered at this point? Just uh, watching the lives, for one, watching you, Pastor Jerry. I mean, every night we try to get on, and, and uh, when we're sitting around the dinner table, that's actually, whether Ethan wants to watch it or not, that kind of <laughs> makes him have to. <laughs> but, Mom, no, not another one. <laughs> so I love that opportunity when it comes on at 7. Oh, we're, we're going to eat dinner at 7 again tonight. <laughs> Man, it's, that's, so, it's been that's amazing. That's awesome. It that's really has. Amazing. You have been such an encouragement. It's been such an inspiration. And, and going for walks. Oh, my goodness. I have not walked so much. I used to think when I walked three miles, that was a lot. Now I've been walking five miles a day. I'm oh, like, my goodness. Just, I just love the beauty, God's beauty, his masterpiece. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I'm in awe. Isn't it, isn't it weird how this is, this is, even though it is a bad thing, it's like God somehow has the ability to take and turn it to where it, it brings out something of value yes. for us and through us. And so, Absolutely. so yours is a walk and yeah. And I even, um, and have encouraged Ethan to let's go together. Let's go walking. And he's like, mom, I'm loving this. And, yeah. and it's quality time, but it's just enjoying God's beauty. And that's where we find our peace. Our People peace. used to walk more. I, I remember when I was a little kid, my grandpa, he lived, 
he lived till he was like 96, something like that. Mm -hmm. And of course I was, he passed away when I was about 11. So it was many years ago, but I remember every day he would get up, he would put a suit on and he would walk to town and back. Oh, wow. And that just sticks in my mind. And of course I'm thinking, did you have nothing to do? <laughs> I mean, it's like our life right now is so busy uh -huh. that we don't it's have true. time to even go for a walk. Well, well can I, I say that's been the blessing um, in all this? Yes. Is yes. that our yes. time, mm -hmm. our time is so valuable. Mm -hmm. And I remember at times even praying, God, just give me some time. Give me some more yes. time. Because yes. Because it seems like yeah. there's just not enough time in the day. And I think actually, instead of looking at this as a negative in all areas, we need to be thanking him for our time. That I we remember have. Absolutely. one time I asked the Lord, I, I said, why? why? Because we've got eight hours to sleep, eight hours to work, and eight hours for something else. Mm -hmm. I said, why did you just give us this amount of time? I said, why didn't you give us more hours in the day? And I felt like the Lord spoke to me, and it was just something very quickly and very direct. It says, you would have just used them up. In other words, mm. if you don't use what you have, even if you had more, you mm. would have just piled stuff in there also and, and used it. Cheryl, what about you? What, what's your what's your uh, what's your center point in well, this, I, all of this? I had a real special uh, encounter right before all of this happened. Uh, the last service that I was here in our regular functioning church, I had a lady come up to me at the end of the church and she said, "I feel like God's gave me a direct word for you." And I said, "Okay." And she said, "I'm just going to let you know." that some things you've desired to do, things you've felt like you've had no time to do, that life is just kind of taking over. God is about to free up your entire wow. calendar. Wow. Mm. Now, she doesn't really know me, this particular person that just spoke into my life. Doesn't know I'm very calendar driven. Uh, and, uh, and I said, okay. And I said, she said, but your whole calendar is fixing to free up. <laughs> and when it frees up, wow. God is going to allow you to do a lot of things that you've been in your heart and just not had time to do. And, uh, and I first wink went by and I went, well, it's still just as crazy. Second wink went by and about that time, that's when all of this hit. And I've had a great opportunity. I am pursuing different things in my life that I felt like in my heart for a while. Uh, I'm taking a lot of training for, with the Auster D Disaster Relief Network. I'm being positioned, uh, we'll start next week, I'm going to be on their prayer hotline. I'll be taking shifts with them from my home. Uh, just all kinds of opportunities that I haven't had, and I've been mm -hmm. taking a lot of intense training through them. And uh, it's been in my heart, but their trainings are lengthy and they're very uh, in-depth. And it's been great to have those times. And some things that, uh, another opportunity I had, some things that's been in my heart for a while, I had a lady call me, I mean, actually take it back, text me and say, I had a dream and this was happening, this was happening. What has it ever been in your heart? And I said, wow. exactly been in my heart. And we've been connecting on those levels. So it's been a real time of, I feel like productivity for me in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I've been able to see things uh, accomplished in my life that's in process. None of them are like beginning and ending type things. But God has just really put some things in process in my life. And I feel like they're really, and I felt this whole thing is all the, from the beginning, I felt like we're all being positioned for the next season. Mm -hmm. I really Without feel like this is a time of positioning. And that's what's really been in my heart since this began. I've shared it with a lot of people as I've talked to them. I like take heart because I feel like this is a time of being positioned. And you know, uh, and when you're being positioned, that means you have to learn the position you're in That's good. for the next level. You know, when a person engages in the sport, they just don't say, okay, you're now the defensive back, get out there. You have to learn what that is. Mm -hmm. What does that entail? You have to take the training to become effective in your part of that experience. And I feel like God is just really, really positioning in us. I feel like uh, he's positioning us for things that the promises Absolutely. The mm -hmm. promises that we have hung on to for years, I think we're being positioned yeah. to see those promises become alive mm -hmm. 
become Rama, become all that stuff. We know the revelation of what who he is. And I feel like that this is a time also I can see how that the prophetic words that's been given for years over this property, mm, over this sanctuary, over this group of people, I can see how that's totally can come into play absolutely. during this time of being positioned. That's and I good. feel like that's where we are. We're and in a position. And I do think Amen. that it's so amazing uh, when you were talking about how God kind of prepared you, gave you word. At, in January, I began to pray about what he wanted me to do this year and what my ministry was going to look like this year. Was I going to go back out to different churches? And, you know, was, was he going to set me up another year of visiting different churches? And I talked to Pastor Jerry, and he, he we were talking about some things to do here at FWC. But then I, when I would pray about specifically going back out ministering, the Lord, he, he never told me that. And I kept thinking, well, Lord, you really haven't put anything on my schedule. Now, had he had put a, had I went out and got all these things on my schedule, I'd have been calling all kinds of churches. I thought this the other day. I'd have been having to cancel everything. But yeah. he knew what was coming. Yeah. And when you're saying positioning, I believe, I, I totally agree with that. And I also believe he's resetting us. Yeah. And uh, he's preparing us for where we're headed next, most definitely. So. You know, I, but I think that in that situation, though, I think that it's, that's why it's so important that when things don't go as we think, that we not panic right. yeah. it, to, where, to where we truly believe that God's in control of what's happening. I mean, yeah. you know, it's amazing how we'll boast of our faith and we're trusting in God until something goes wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, we tend to panic. But, but you're right. You, there's no way we could have possibly known what was coming. And then out. also, I was mm -hmm. thinking yesterday as I was kind of praying and walking through my house and how great it's been to see. I feel like, you know, when it says, and we, we always talk about generational blessings and things like that. And I was thinking, you know, Lord, how blessed just John and I and our kids and even our grandkids have been during this time of having jobs and having provision and everything. And I was thinking, Lord, as we learned years ago to worship you with our giving, not just mm -hmm. give it, mm -hmm. worship you with our giving. Yeah. I think it's so important. I think that was one of the greatest lessons I ever walked into was that giving is a continuation of my worship. And sometimes it's mm -hmm. some of the most impactful sure. when I'm giving of my blessings and how, because we learned that I feel like the things we're seeing are not by accident. I think the reason we have jobs and have provision and, and when other people may not or cannot have it is because the generational blessing from my parents, from their parents, and on down that there's been the faithfulness to the yes. generations that we're reaping Amen. those benefits now. And I believe that strongly <clears throat> that we are reaping during this time of unrest and a time of no stability in the world that there's a stability we have in Gen Amen. Jesus Christ of you're still God. Nothing can stop your promises, your provision. Yeah. That's right. And who you are. Yes. It still is stand. still just like it was yeah. 60 years ago. That same promise is in effect today. Are, are, you, are you finding people to be more open now than they were before? In your I think circle. they're more open to prayer. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. And, and they have absolutely no one I've come into contact has had any, like, they don't withdraw, like, mm, okay, you know, pray for me. They're like, say, can I, have, can I pray for you? And they're like, please. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And that's yes. more their response is like, please. Yeah. And uh, I know the other night we were just having the opportunity of, we have a group of, of uh, people that we've been playing cards with for a long time, just a little uh, family game. And, and the other night I had my alarm set. I have my alarm set on my phone every night at eight o'clock because it had come through Facebook that, you know, it was a time of back in Churchill that asked for people just to pray. And a lot of people were saying, okay, let's as many as possible pray at eight o'clock for one minute. And we were in the middle of this uh, game and all of a sudden my alarm went off and they said, you got something? I said, that's just my little prayer time for one minute. And they said, well, then let's just all pray together. Wow. And it was just an opportunity that's cool. by yeah, that's not even being forced on you but just because the alarm went off and people uh, are open to it now. Very open. Absolutely. Very open. I've had more people. I thought, you know, maybe how, how was ministry going to work? How was it going to work in the yeah. midst of this? I have done more ministry now 
then I think I have my whole entire life. I mean, people are contacting me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We've had old church members contacting us, mm -hmm. wanting us to pray, pray. My hairdresser that was in Temple, you know, uh, we've been doing Zoom. I've had people that, you know, have just I've met or connected with that are saying, can we do a Zoom and have a, have a Bible study together? So ministry is full at hand. People are open and they want to know. Yeah, and you know, that is a, that is a, I want to ask you that same question as to what you're experiencing there. Okay. Um, but there's almost been, because we've, we've not been able to have church in the building, it's almost the mindset in some people's mind that, well, that just means we're not, we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. We're not ministering. We're not having church. But in reality, I am finding myself busier now mm -hmm. ministering to people than I was before this whole thing got started. Absolutely. I mean, it is constant. Yeah. It I is. Know. I so wake up in the morning. Thinking, I need a break. <laughs> I've been waking up in the morning. I'm like, okay, Lord, who do you want me to minister today? Yeah. Um, lead me to who needs you today. And we were chuckling. We had a pool guy come out because we we're like, we're going to put a pool in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, he came out. And we started talking about what was going on in the world. And the next thing you know, we're talking about Jesus. And I asked him, hey, can I, can I break open the word with you for a minute? You got time? He goes, I got two hours. Wow. And the next That's thing awesome. you know, I'm breaking out the word of God. Wow, wow. And we're having a conversation. And I got to ask him, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Wow. We are living in, uh, this, this isn't an all negative thing. There are positives Absolutely. everywhere we Absolutely. look. And the people are hungry. Yeah. Absolutely. How about Claire? What, what's your space look like? Are you finding people more open Absolutely. around you? Absolutely. Um, back in the day when we were going to AEC, um, Dad Thomas's church, we had a thing called prayer and care partners, and I was part of that. And we've kind of stopped doing that. Explain and prayer I've, and care. <laughs> sorry. You just reach out and you pray for people. You meet people where they're at. If they need just to talk, you're there. Um, you just take interest in their life. And I found myself being too busy for that. Wow. Even though I, I pray at work with people that sit in front of me or lay in front of me. <laughs> and you are faithful about that lady, love. <laughs> and I pray for them. That's my pulpit. I was lacking in other areas, which was outsiders. Yeah. But that's my heart. It's to care for others. And I found myself being able to do that again. And that's called care and share? What is it? Prayer, Prayer and, care. and care. Prayer and care. I love that. Prayer yeah. and care partners. That's yeah. And so I've, I've started reaching out and saying, God, who do you want me to connect with? And just giving them a call and, hey, just catching up. Wanted to let you know I'm here. Um, if you need prayer for something, if you just need to talk. Wow. You know, wow, just. Wow, wow, wow. And I, I remember telling God, Wow, I don't like being so busy. I can't do this. Yeah, and th this is, we, we got busy, and we did not realize we were busy. <laughs> or, and I'm speaking of me personally, yeah. but I'm I sure that, that probably goes to all of us, is yeah. to everybody. Uh, so many things going, but still that sense of not being productive. Yes. I, at the end of the day, I'm just thinking, good gracious, I've got tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And it was almost like, you know, you're like this mouse that's on this wheel that's running, but, but you, you're not. And it's, it's like this, this thing has happened. This has literally, uh, it's thrown the brakes on everything. It's, mm -hmm. it's like it almost reset the hard drive. And uh, it's, it's made me, I'm, I'm trusting the Lord that I'm going to be different going out of this thing when, than I was coming into it. Everybody keeps saying, are you ready for, uh, to get back to our, our normal? Yeah. I'm not ready. I, I don't want to go back to the same way I was doing things. I want to go at it 100% like I'm doing right now. I want everything to be yeah. centered around the heart of Jesus. And yeah. so I, I, I don't want that. I, I think that God has done a great awakening in the midst of this, and he awakened our hearts yes. and our minds and our souls and our spirits to who he really is and to get our focus back on him and there are some things that we may want to cut away a little bit from our yeah. life i mean we, we don't you know and start really trying to balance our time That's and realize how precious that yeah. our time is we we yeah. are we're now a couple of weeks into this are you uh, have you had any favorite 
unexpected moments that's happened in your family? I'm so glad you asked this. (laughs) (laughs) We've had quite a few, but I got to share this one. It's so sweet. Okay. So it was Sunday morning and we had on FWC, you know, everybody, Mm -hmm. our church is so amazing. And so we, 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 everybody gets up, we're ready, you know, Mm -hmm. and we come into the living room and here comes CJ. He's all excited and, and Jason starts singing and the Holy Spirit just fell in our living room and it was such a sweet presence holy spirit yeah. God. and i'm just worshiping i'm worshiping god and the look around the kids are you know and i mean i just kind of get lost in it for a minute you know just we need a break and just get lost mm-hmm. in the holy spirit mm-hmm. and all of a sudden i hear these little cries it was just like this sweet little cry and it was cj And it wasn't a, I'm hurting cry. It wasn't like that. This was a sweet cry (laughs) of the Holy Spirit falling on my four-year-old grandbaby. (laughs) Dan Yoko didn't really quite understand what all was going on. And I said, baby, leave him alone. I said, that's the Holy Spirit. And I said, the Holy Spirit's moving on CJ. And so that was just phenomenal. That's that's special. It was, it really was. It's a moment I won't ever forget. So it's awesome. Claire, how about you? Any unexpected, uh, precious things uh, crop up during this time for you? Well, you know, I thought I had it all figured out. Um, I was making more money. Um, Everything kind of revolved around um, work. And I love my job, uh, but sometimes we can exalt things too much. And uh, I thought I was gonna help my husband by not him having to work as much. I thought I had it all figured out. <laughs> well, God's been blessing. You know, I wanted to see Teddy not work as hard because Teddy's right. one of the hardest working people I he know. Is indeed. I figured <laughs> if anybody deserved a break, he did. And. So I just, God just really brought me back to the place where he said, you know, your heart's right, because I did it from the goodness of my heart. I was, I just always wanted to do for him because he's always done for us. Um, And I, God told me, well, it's not time yet. So when all this happened, what happens is I get laid off and I have to draw unemployment, which is awesome that my boss actually paid in insurance so that I was able to, and I appreciate her for that, and that was a blessing. But what was even more of a blessing is that God actually opened doors for Teddy right before all this happened, out of the blue, with an old friend of his. He just called him up and said, I was trying to think of who I wanted to help me with some sound systems for different churches that are wanting to um, install lives in their churches. I mean, again, this all happened right before this all shut down. So God's provision Mm -hmm. was incredible. Um, Never think you can figure God out. (laughs) I thought I had it all figured out and I didn't. And then God just opened up the doors for Teddy to do something he actually loves too. It's it's not even hard work because he works by himself. And so he and Shane did this together and Teddy's having a blast. He was out riding uh, dirt bikes and motorcycles with Shane. He hadn't done that in years. And I mean, Shane's oh, like, let's go Lord. do this. Let's go do that. <laughs> and so it was just Don't so cool. Fall off. <laughs> it was so cool to the me. sound. It was just cool to me to see that God even gave him the desire of his heart. Wow. He, and when you got a happy husband, you got a happy wife. <laughs> Well, you got a happy life. <laughs> the faithfulness of God. Yes. Yes. That's, that's yes. And God, oh, I was just going to no, mention go ahead, God go has been so faithful with taking care of us. And I agree with what Cheryl said. When you give, yeah. it comes back. It's, it's a principle. It you know, back. I'll tell you something. Our church has been, they are such, they're very generous. They're mm-hmm. not out of balance with it. Yeah. They're, they're not... You know, they're not somebody that gives everything that they've got, but they are, they really have an understanding of the seed plant harvest principle. And our church is faithful in their giving. They're just faithful. They're good. 
and uh, so we we have a good we have a good family. It's awesome. We, we do. We do. Cheryl, what's your any unexpected favorite moments that's popped up in the last couple of weeks? Anything happened to you that jazzed you just a little bit? Well, you know, it's it's always connections that are unexpected sometimes, and uh, I think during this time, you know, if you know me at all, you know what a family person I am. And it's been really great in that area of all the FaceTiming and you have time to do it and you're just doing FaceTiming like all you're doing is watching your great grandkids run around the living room and, you know, do things. But it's just you have the time to do it. And then you have time just to talk because Mm -hmm. I get to talk with my grandkids and we talk about everything and we talk about, you know, what God's doing and it's just been a because of just the slowing down, you can just, you know, we always FaceTime, but it was like five minutes on, five minutes off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing this, you're doing that. And, and uh, not being able to, it's just been the situation since the two great grandkids have come. It's just been a time I haven't get to be physically with them, but it's been blessed just to see what God blesses us with, with technology, like she's talking about, with all this time. And just to, the blessing of, being with people, engaging with them. Right. And I think because we all have that foundation within us, it's just such a natural thing at this point in our lives mm-hmm. uh, just to live and share. And what a great opportunity it is to realize it's just part of your DNA, like she said, mm-hmm. living and sharing with God. It's not an effort. Right. It's mm-hmm. like when you're getting to be with someone or you're just watching a great grandkid or a grandkid, whatever it is, automatically the things of God just come out. Mm -hmm. But we have more time. We're on longer sessions of doing that. And so it's been wonderful when I get off your thing. It was, it wasn't an effort. It wasn't like you had to pull out the Bible. It wasn't like you had to pull. It's just inherently, it just comes out in your everyday and just like they'll say something, you're like, well, let's just pray over that right now. Mm-hmm. It, it is such a time of even not being together, but yet sharing mm-hmm. life and these experiences we're going through. And then you say, I've got to watch God work in their lives. And, uh, and, I'll, and I get the opportunity to say, you know that was God, right? Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. that's because God intervened. And it's such a awesomeness of watching God just be who he is. And I think it's been so wonderful of just realizing how deep your roots are during this time. And sometimes we're so busy. I don't think we realize we're so busy trying to get that scripture reading in or getting that prayer time. We don't really realize how much God and the Holy Spirit has invested in us yeah. mm-hmm. and how far we've come yeah. and how much is, yeah, how much, how is, much is in there us. Yeah. until we'd have the opportunity to, during this time yeah. just to really come out. And it's mm-hmm. a natural thing, whether we're at Walmart or wherever we are, it's just naturally watching the, de- the depth that God has invested in you. And so it's really become a time of reflection for me, mm-hmm. uh, of watching God. And you know, I was reflecting back when you was talking about CJ, that I genuinely, I can't remember a lot of things, but I can tell you, I could draw you a picture of the church, I could draw you the altars, and I could draw you where I was. And I was five years old when I gave my heart to God. And in that very same church in Luling, when I was nine years old, they had flipped that sanctuary. What was now the back was now the front. I could draw you where I was at that altar when I was filled with the infilling of the Holy Spirit at nine years old. Wow. Pivotal moments in my life. But yes, I struggled through the teen years. And I remember at 16, and this is what I want to encourage parents are that may be struggling with you know, you don't want your kids to be on their phones during church. There's, they get distracted. But I'm telling you, the night that I surrendered wholeheartedly and have always moved forward with God was when I was 16. Even though those are, I knew they, I knew those experiences. That's the same age I was. When I, mean, I was yeah. 16. Mm-hmm. But the night I surrendered totally, I was not engaged in that service. I can't tell you who preached that night. 
I can't tell you the invitation. Yeah. We, there was a group of us girls and we were back then, the old days, writing notes. We didn't have phones, writing notes, not paying attention. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit gripped my life. And I went to that altar like I was being drawn. And so what I'm saying is, we don't need to get so involved. And I think that's what God has stripped away during this time, the mechanics. Because the night I surrendered, it was not on my agenda and it was not on my plan. Mm -hmm. And I was not paying a bit of attention in that service. I was not. Because I had no intention of being engaged with God that night. Even though I was, I was taken to church. I was, mm -hmm. this is where you are. Dad's preacher, you're the kid, and this is what you do. But that night, the Holy Spirit had a different agenda. And I think that's what I want to share about now. That we can't be so worried about what's happening, how people are responding, but depending and pleading that blood over our lives and drawing that bloodline mm -hmm. so that the Holy Spirit has the opportunity to do the work. Yes. Yeah. When He wants to do it. And yes. He draws. And Jesus said, if, if I be lifted up, I will draw. Oh, man. And I think that's all we have to do during this time is just point to Jesus. Yeah. You were 16? 16. How old were you, Claire? Um, I first I received the Holy Spirit when I was 12 and got saved when I was 12. And then um, came back to the Lord, got away and came back to the Lord when I was 23. Okay. And after that, it was history. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How about I was you? 16, and let yeah. me tell you, it was one of the greatest mm -hmm. experiences of my mm -hmm. lifetime because I was such a messed up teenager, and I needed God so desperately, but I didn't know it. You know what I mean? It's one of those moments that you, I was searching, and I didn't know what I needed. I just knew that I needed something because my life was not going in the right direction, and I became a, I went to, my mom put me in a Christian private school, and I saw these kids, and they acted different than I did. <laughs> I was a rebel without a cause. <laughs> but these kids prayed, and these kids talked about Jesus all the time, mm -hmm. and they seemed happy. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, I'm not happy. Wasn't happy. And so, anyways, they invited me to come to their church, and I started going to church, and I didn't walk to the altar. It wasn't just a drawing, but I ran yeah. to the altar yeah. with my arms lifted up, and I was... Holy Spirit wow. just fell, and it was it was dramatic for me. And I guess I'm a little dramatic, so Jesus no. knew exactly what I needed. But anyway, so <laughs> I got filled with the Holy Ghost, and uh, you know it was one of the greatest moments of my life. Yeah. I was 16. I didn't get saved by a 12 step program. I was one of those who got mm -hmm. radically saved. Yeah, that was radically me. saved. That, that was moment. me. <laughs> well, see, mine was the opposite because I'd been born into it. It was, and that's a difference. Isn't and it, it was. I had it, those marked experiences in my life when I was young, but um, as a pastor's child, you see so much hurt towards your parents. You see so much hypocrisy within the church, and you see. It's hard to deal hard with to your parents. Kid, it, it, it's hard to deal with the way people treat your parents as pastors. It's very discard it's it's very discouraging for kids. And you're basically like, you know, if that's what being in church and all of this is about, check me off. Cross me out. And that's where you get because I had those experiences when I was young, but then wow. I started seeing a lot of that's huge. Really what That's huge. deterred me was not the world. It was the church that deterred me. <laughs> but then that's you realize a... that not everybody in the church. But that's what I'm saying. Way. But yeah. then I came into a full relationship myself. Yeah. Yeah. And then Christ became who I looked to because you start realizing, and that's where you have to live in ministry or being raised in wow. ministry, that everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, doesn't live it. And everybody that mm -hmm. says they are, aren't. Yeah. But God said, our spirit will bear witness with the next person's spirit. Uh -huh. And I think that's where we have to really live. We don't have to buy into everybody's talk. And mm -hmm. we don't have to buy into everybody's declarations. But if our spirit bears witness, God says, right. that's where we can live. And that's where we can have our confidence. Yeah. That he's given us that ability that as we walk in the spirit, that we can know 
who we can trust and we can know who's the real deal. And the great thing about it, God says, and you know what? Don't worry about it. Let the wheat and the tares mm, grow good. up right together. Yeah. It's true. And that's I'll true. do the work. Yeah. And mm -hmm. but we want to separate the wheat and the tares, and we don't want everybody growing up together. And we want to, yeah, mm -hmm. we want to point. Well, they're not doing it, so why should I do it? Or they're doing it, so why can't I do it? And uh, and it's a real realization, you know, of no matter whether you was a rebel without a cause or you're with someone that just raised every breath in it. There comes a point that you've been so disappointed. There comes a time you're so discontented. There comes that point in your life where you're just so frustrated with people. And that you're, desperate. And, and you're desperate. desperate. And so Jesus is the one that's the answer right. to all that. Yes. 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 And that's what became the revelation in my life. It was when he became the revelation of who he is. That changed my life. And that nobody else can make mm. you feel like he makes you feel. Yeah. And nobody you else can yeah. comfort you in the middle of some of the worst things of your life. Nobody else can come on scene as quick as he can yeah. and fix things. Yeah. And the you key, know? and I would like to say the key is love. That's Just right. love them. Love them where they're at. Yeah. And that's hard to do. That takes growth. I, one of the, I think one of the main things, though, that comes out of this conversation, if we can look back over this whole conversation, is something that I need to emulate from Mr. Rogers. Uh, uh -uh. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever noticed that when he goes in to do his show, he's got a light signal up there, you know, red, mm -hmm. yellow, but it's always flashing on yellow, mm -hmm. which he means slow down, mm -hmm. slow down. I think really that's the key for us right now Amen. with what we're doing is to really take advantage of this and slow down. Okay, i got to ask you this one question. This is something I always ask everybody. What's your guilty pleasure junk food during this quarantine? Yeah. Maybe you don't have one. Maybe you don't want to talk about it. Mm. I don't know, but I've got to ask Cheryl, what's yours? Ice Anything? cream. Ice cream. But ice cream just seems to rule the well, day. I, I normally, I don't know, I guess because you're, you're like very... I'm more disciplined in my life when it comes to ice cream. And then I'm like, now it's like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pandemic. Who cares? Right? Who cares? That's exactly right. I'm going to have ice cream today. <laughs> right. So it's okay. Uh, so uh, I may have just... That's fine. I may have what kind? Just, uh, ice cream. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Homemade vanilla. I, you can I know what that means. Bar. You can give me, you just give me any type of ice cream and I'm probably going to eat it. But just name it. It's going to, you know, whatever's there. But, you know, I'm always, I've been a lot more disciplined as far as the intake of ice cream into my life. But like now I'm just like, eh. Yeah, that okay. happens after you get about yeah. 35, 40. That, that begins to happen. Claire, what's your, <laughs> what is your favorite? <clears throat> your, gummy bears. Your gummy bears. <laughs> really? Mm, we had a big old bag of them, and I don't keep them around, but during this time, we've had them around. Oh. And I just I, I make myself feel better because I'll go by and get a few. Then <laughs> yeah. I wait a while. Then I'll go back by and get a few more. Get a few more yes. <laughs> and, then, of course, don't forget I'm walking. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, <laughs> so I can allow for more, even those hot tamales. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, well, cheers. Oh, I'm really going to rat on myself, so. Go ahead. You know, Tell it. <laughs> Tell it all, girl. I've been off sugar for two years. And as you can do, <laughs> there's been a little change over this little quarantine time. But my daughter in law makes some of the best cakes mm, and. Oh. Uh, <laughs> And cake and coconut cream pies, my downfall. Oh, and so I got a dear friend that likes to make me coconut cream pies. And Those my, are delicious. <laughs> yeah. Those are delicious. Those are delicious. And then my daughter-in-law, and she makes some of the best cakes, guys. I mean, they're just delicious. And so between the cake and the coffee with the Has she brought heavy me whipping anything cream. Yet? I don't know, but I might need to put that. I think you need to. I think you need to do that. Yeah, between the, you know, like last night she made this pineapple cake, yeah. with fresh pineapples oh and my stuff. Goodness. It was yeah. so good. Coconut cream is yeah. definitely my favorite. So I ask for all of yeah. you out there to please say a special, special it, it prayer for me. Help. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean it. Help me, Jesus. That, that, yeah. that, that ain't gonna help you. The food. Rocky, the food. Rocky, Rocky yeah, Road ice cream is yeah, my favorite. Yeah, go for Rocky Road. Only allow yourself a ice cream a week to now it's a day. So you know. Give yeah. yourself a lot of allowance yeah. during this yeah, pandemic. because I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't care what you think. I know. It's like we think we're in our home, so nobody's going to see, but we're going to yeah. come out, and it's going to be like, oh, my gosh, so what happened to all these people? <laughs> Guys, we grew a little. Thank you for thank you for doing this. This has been so much fun. It uh, gives people an opportunity to get to know you better. 
I kind of hear your heart on some things, and uh, you know, we're not necessarily trying to solve the world's problems, but sometimes just conversation about it brings rest, and when people see your attitude about it, it sometimes settles them. You know, and, and I, we go back to, I've, it's always been kind of a guiding light, but it's become really precious to me, is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yes. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge no, Him. Yeah. And you know, I think during this time, it's such a time yeah. to embrace that. Uh, just don't lean so to your understanding. Yeah. We're not going to know. Yeah. And we can drive our crazy try, selves crazy trying to find, figure it out, or we can just trust in the Lord. Yeah. And I want to leave on Deuteronomy 31 and 6. And let's be courageous, guys. Mm -hmm. Let's be strong. Be courageous. Yes. And don't, don't be afraid. Yes. Because the Lord will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He says, don't be terrified. Don't be worried. God is with yeah. us in the midst of this. God is reigning over us. And victory is on its way. Amen. Here's what I want you to do is I want you, and we haven't done this on any of these at this point, but I want you to pray for everybody. You want me I want, to? Yes, I want you to pray. Okay. And I want you just to, because there's a lot of people that are watching that uh, may not may not have the assurance, may not have the, the comfort. They, they are, and it's legitimate when people are afraid. That's, that's not made up. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's really real to them. Yes. It, it may not be real in reality. You know, it's like they say perception may not be reality, but it's reality to the person that's perceiving mm -hmm. it. And so they, they need comfort. And sometimes they need comfort that only the Holy Spirit can give and the words that you guys can give. So why don't you just end this thing with, with a, a prayer for our family. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. And we want to tell you how much we love you. And we thank you for who you are. Lord, I ask you, God, that you would just begin to flow into the homes, God, of these people your people, Father God, that are anxious and concerned and worried, God. And Lord, that you would send forth your peace in the midst of the storm, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that no matter what comes our way, that you're a great big God. And you s knew it was going to happen before it ever happened. Mm -hmm. You knew what was going to take place before it ever happened. So God, you're on the throne. You still reign. And you are the author of all things. You are, gonna, you are the finisher. You are the fixer. So God, we thank you, Father, that you are in the midst of our lives and you are taking care of us as we surrender to you, Lord. All these things, God. You are faithful and you are a just God. And you come, Lord, it may not always be right when we want it, but Father, you are always on time. So you're an on-time God, and we thank you, Lord, that you are with us, you are for us, that you are, Lord, you have plans of a great future for us, of hope. God, you have a plan, and so we, Lord, delight in your plan today. And Lord, where some, Lord, may be sorrowful, we ask you, Lord, that you would send forth your strength and your joy into their lives, Lord, for where the joy of the Lord is, there is our strength. And so, Father God, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory and honor today. And we thank you for being with us, for being faithful and being such a, such a mighty God that is always there for us, that will never leave us, that will never forsake us. And Lord, we just love you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's been awesome.